But it was amazing to me. He, he didn't expect to be the Republican nominee. I mean, he was sitting there saying, you know, you know I, I said, look, I feel awkward giving him advice. Well, he, you've done it twice. He wants to know how you did it. I said, fine, I'll come prepared to tell him about the decisions we had to make. And it was like, you know, first decision, how are you going to get to 270? We had to have several paths to get to 270. And I happened to mention that one of the paths that we had, to, we had to win four historically Democrat border states that had voted for Clinton Gore twice, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia. He said, West Virginia? I did really good in West Virginia. I can win West Virginia. I did really good in the primaries there. I said, yeah, you're going to win West Virginia. But it wasn't that way in 2000. And he had no idea that West Virginia, I mean, Bob Dole lost it by 16 points. It was a Democrat state. When we went for it in 2000, literally political reporters were saying, you guys are morons. You're wasting your time and your money. But then I said, you know, I said we had four Western states to go after that had been won once or twice by Clinton Gore, Montana, Nevada, Arizona, and won twice, Oregon, that we needed to either win the first three and we had a shot at the last one. He said, Oregon, I could do really good in Oregon. I'm going to win Oregon. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, in 2000, uh, they just elected a U.S. senator. They had three of five congressmen were Republicans. They controlled the state house. They, had, they were down by one seat in the state Senate. They had two constitutional officers. They were on the way up. And we had Ralph Nader on the ballot with a real following in the kooks and nuts in Portland and Eugene. And we came within 5,500 votes of winning the state. But since then, it's gone hard left. They're, the party's been wiped out. Last statewide victory they had was 2002. They're down to one congressman. They have less than a third of the legislature, nobody in the state capitol. You can't win Oregon. He said, well, I'll win California. <laughs> I said, no, you're not, and here's why. <laughs> he said, well, I'll win New York. I said, no, with all due respect, Bernie Sanders got more votes than the entire Republican field combined. In fact, two and a half times as many people voted in the New York Democratic primary as voted in the Republican primary. You're 26 points down in the real clear politics average uh, against Hillary Clinton. She's won statewide twice. You're not going to win New York. And every day you try winning New York or California or Oregon is a day you can't spend in a state that you can win like Pennsylvania or Iowa. He says, I can win Iowa? <laughs> I said, yeah, you didn't do too well in the caucuses, but all those farmers out west, they hate her. And there are a bunch of blue-collar working class people, mostly Democrats and independents in the eastern part of the state that are worried about their jobs and trade, and you can win Iowa. And he turns to our host and says, why isn't anybody in my campaign talking to me about this? So a couple weeks later, he goes out and repeats my point. You got, I've got to have a, have a strategy to get to 270. I'm going to, have, I'm going to concentrate all my time and energy and effort in these states. And you aren't going to see me anywhere else except to raise money, but I'm going to be in these states, and that's why I want to tell you what they are. I'm going to spell out the 15 battleground states I've got between now and the Republican National Convention, but I'm going to tell you about three of them today. New York, Oregon, and California. <laughs> so I, I call up our host and I said, well, he got the principle right. If the execution leaves a little bit to be desired. But it, it's, it's a constant reminder to me that, that everything about this experience is new to him. Running for office, being in the office, dealing with Congress. I mean, I can't imagine another president who would say, I'm having a bipartisan, we call them bipart, bicameral. Holtz Egan has been in many of them. They're, they're, they're like going to the proctologist without a, an anesthesiologist present. And so you got Democrats and Republicans, and they're in the cabinet room, and you're trying to find some common ground. I can't imagine any president saying, let's bring in the media and have them watch us. But it's, it, it's him. Yeah. So um, let's, let's circle around a little bit to... If that ever happened, Egan would have gotten a professional shave, new suit, clean shirt, tie... And his, his wife, who was a uh, budget girl, uh, her, that was her next name, budget gal, uh, would, have, would, have, would have made certain he was presentable. But that would never happen in any other administration.